Barksdale takes it. And here goes the All-American down the sideline. And he's gone. And it will load up and throw. Looking down the field. And ball is caught. And he's gone. And that's Morgan. Touchdown. Saturday afternoon in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. We welcome you to James Work Memorial Field as the number nine ranked Delaware Valley University Aggies take on the Lebanon Valley Flying Dutchman. Game number eight of the Division Three football season for the Aggies finds the Aggies at home for homecoming weekend with an undefeated record of 7-0 sitting in first place in the conference with two teams that are playing each other today sitting one game back of them and they play host to Lebanon Valley as the Aggies and Flying Dutchman will get this kicked off in just a bit. Well, last week, wa the Aggies were on the road in Dallas, Pennsylvania, up at Miss Recordia, the first game for the Aggies since the season-ending injury to All-American Michael Nobile. And so far, so good. The Aggies gave up less than 100 yards. They held the Cougars scoreless in a 35 to nothing victory. And the Aggies continue to be led, statistically speaking, by their senior inside linebacker, Anthony Tedisco. Teddy, as they call him, the Ocean City native of, uh, or Ocean, New Jersey native, 61 tackles on the year. Among the conference leaders in that category, six and a half stops for 15 uh, yards. And Teddy has anchored what has been a young but very effective linebacking core, the Aggies graduated their other three linebackers, changed to a 4-3 set, and Tedesco playing alongside of Trent Fries and Aaron Myers, who's been with the team for a while, but Myers playing safety up until this year. The Aggies with the number one statistically ranked defense in the country, giving up 118 yards per game, under 35, under 33 yards per game on the ground, and 86 yards per game through the air. For the Aggies on offense, they've started to find their footing a little bit over the last few weeks. They've uh, little f also found their identity. They're 
become a little bit more of a running attack. Dante Simmons is the conference's lead all, uh, leading rusher. He's been uh, pushing his average closer to 100 yards every couple of weeks, and uh, the last two weeks he's gone over the century mark, including in the victory at Misericordia. But this is the day when the Aggies will uh, probably distribute the ball to a lot of different guys, and one of them to keep an eye on is the sophomore from Archbishop Wood High School in Philadelphia, Tamir Barksdale. Uh, Barksdale leads the team in receptions. He's got 24. He leads the team in passing yards with 264, and if neither of those sounds like a lot, that's accurate. It's not a ton of yards because the Aggies in uh, most games will throw the ball to seven or eight different guys, but Barksdale also a threat on special teams, an All-American punt returner. He already has one return for a score earlier this year, and as just a sophomore, is the all-time leader in that category here at Delaware Valley. Aggies come on to the field on homecoming. Pretty decent crowd here. Some of the students perhaps have headed for cover as a lot of the campus is without power. Homecoming drawing some other folks back to campus. The athletic complex here is fine. Over on the opposing sideline today for Lebanon Valley, Flying Dutchman really led by their defense. Defensive coordinator Greg Drake has got a really good defensive end in Brandon Brubaker. Brubaker with 60 stops on the season, 13 and a half for loss and two sacks. One thing Lebanon Valley has done very well this year is sack the quarterback. They've got 17 coming into today. We'll pause for the national anthem. Dutchman coming to today's game three and four, two and three in conference. Got the season started off on the right foot. Beat their regional rival Franklin and Marshall for the first time in over a decade in the uh, season opener. Back-to-back -back losses after that to two of the top teams in the conference, Lycoming or in a non-conference game, and then Lebanon uh, and then Widener in the conference opener. Victories for the Flying Dutchman over Alvernia so far this year. They have played FDU Florham very close. They played Wilkes close last week. They have been in just about every game they've played. With the ex you know the ones they won, they won uh, the, the win over Alvernia was comfortable. And the Aggies, I'm sure, expect a hard-fought game today with the Flying Dutchman. Aggies, a couple of things on the line for them today with a victory. They would likely be the number one team in the first regional rankings released this upcoming week in what is now Region 1, which, as strange as it sounds, is basically New England. These two teams are in the New England region, and no, we're nowhere near New England, but that's where they are in terms of the NCAA regional rankings. Duke Greco with a victory today would become the all-time leader in that category. He's currently tied with Jim Clements, both guys with 66 victories. Clements' friend and predecessor here. Now the head coach at Division II Kutztown near Reading. The Aggies would also put themselves in position to win at least a share of the conference title next week if they win today. The two teams behind them are Lycoming and Wilkes. Dalval has beaten Lycoming. They will play Wilkes next weekend in Edwardsville. Kick is away from Pat Moran. It's a line drive that takes a weird bounce and is eventually scooped up by Cameron Niemeyer. And Niemeyer is tackled around the 21, 22 year, uh, yard line. It was a very strange bounce. Niemeyer had to track it down. Flying Dutchman take the field here. Let's get you a look at the 
Lebval offense. Your left tackle is senior Walter Klinger. The left guard is Colin Krakowski. Center from, Leb uh, from Lebanon, Pennsylvania, Nate Schaefer. The right guard, junior Arturo Ramirez Guzman. And the right tackle is Jacob Phillips. Klinger, the leader of that lineup, he's the one of two seniors on the left side along with Krakowski. Quarterback is Braden Bohannon. We'll talk about him in a bit, but he's the team's leading rusher. And on cue, first play is a rush to Bohannon. <laughs> Flying Dutchman's skill position players, they have two good wide receivers that are seniors and a man down on the first play of the game for the Flying Dutchman. Well, the lineman in a lot of pain and... They will check on that. Wide receivers for the Flying Dutchman today. Cameron Niemeyer, who had the kick return. He has 31 uh, receptions for 334 yards. He's the team's leader in both of those categories. Andrew Olson, number 84, 22 catches for 313 yards and three touchdowns. Three tight ends set for Coach Bueller as they work on the injured Flying Dutchman. Joe Underwood, Gabe Randall, and Ryan Eshelman, the three tight ends. And if you're just joining us, just tuning in, it was just the first play from scrimmage was a four-yard, three-yard gain, but Nate Schaefer, the team's starting center, is very slow to come off the field. The junior from Cedar Crest High School in Leb uh, Lebanon, Pennsylvania, very close to Lebval. Lebval is in Anvil. And the backup, tight, uh, backup center for the Flying Dutchman would be a freshman, Brian Cassidy, number 77. And I don't think that's who came out. No, that they did is they shifted 65 for the Flying Dutchman is currently the center. Second and seven. And a handoff, about half a yard, and that's it. 65 would be Trey Reynolds, a sophomore outside guard who seemed to be the center. It's third and six for the Flying Dutchman. Ian Merhorn and Tim Irvey are the two tailbacks, and then Braden Bohannon, who this year is completing 47% of his passes, 137 yards per game. He's much more of a threat to run the ball, 61 yards per game on the ground for Bohannon, who's carried it 100 and now 21 times with that first play. Flying Dutchman this year are 34% conversion in terms of third down. They have a third and six on the first possession of the game. Bohannon out of the shotgun with Irvy to his left. Bohannon rolls in that direction. Yusef Aladinov gets a hand on him. The pass is thrown incomplete as Yusef Aladinov disrupts that one. And the Flying Dutchman will be forced to punt. Aladinov first on the teams in tackles for loss and he has been absolutely on fire the last few weeks last week he had a sack a fumble return and I thought he had a chance to win defensive player of the week in the MAC but you could say that about Delaware Valley every single week so understandable that they don't punt is away Barksdale who we mentioned in the pregame catches at his own 37 Good blocking in front of Tamir. Stays on his feet across midfield. And down to about the Flying Dutchman 45 where the Aggies will take over. So Delaware Valley's first possession of the game will start at the Lebanon Valley 45, 46, they'll call it. And this is what that offense looks like. Very senior heavy, heavy along the line. Corey Shriver, the left tackle from Warminster. Mount, or Austin Mount Regan, as we've taken to call him. The big man, 6'4", 340 pounds from Percocet, is the, right, is the left guard. Jeremy Adams, the senior captain, is the center. Ron got a good win, excuse me, and Ban Banofti on the right side of the line. This is Dante Simmons, the tailback, and Simmons spins ahead from the down to about the 40-yard line. It's a six-yard carry for Dante, and that is right on his season average. Aggies tailbacks, Simmons will get the bulk of the carries, but you'll also see freshman Julian White who's averaging 11 yards per carry in uh, limited action. And Ralph Hyland, the senior, will also see some action we would expect today. Second and four for the Aggies. First possession of the day for DelVal. Bohannon hands it off again. And Simmons this time just tucks his head down and dives forward for about three. Bring up a third and short for Delaware Valley. 
Aggies wide receivers, they throw the ball to six or seven different guys. So uh, officially we'll call the starters Tavian Dorsey, the senior from Hanover, and Nasir Morgan, the freshman from Atlantic City. But Isaiah Calhoun has three touchdowns. Barksdale, we told you about him. Bryce Dorsey is the tight end. You will see lots of different guys. Aaron Nelson had his best game of the season last week, just one yard off on a 100-yard performance with a touchdown against Miss Recordia. Third and one here, and Bohannon will hand the ball off. Simmons seeks the first down. He's got it. And pushed out of bounds about the 31-yard line. It's a pickup of, again, close to six for Dante. And the Aggies move the chains. Aggies starting quarterback today is Daquan Bohannon, the senior from Philadelphia, Northeast High School. 93 completions and 189 attempts, a little close to 1,200 yards. Done a good job taking care of the ball for the most part. 15 touchdowns and five interceptions, and a lot of those interceptions have come, or at least a couple of them on Hail Marys at the end of the half when they don't really do any damage. Bohannon, quick throw. This is a catch. This is Julian White, the freshman. And White out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. A pickup of seven for Julian White. And second and three coming up. Aggies on offense, pretty balanced. 210 yards per game on the ground, 190 through the air. You saw that third down conversion a moment ago. They've done all right in that regard. Trying to get into the red zone for the 35th time this season. They're 30 for 34 in trips to the red zone. All of them but one touchdowns. Aggies will hand off the ball here to John Davis. Davis cuts inside. Only got three or four, but that's enough for a first down before he's tackled. Making the stop there for Lebanon Valley was Noah Kaldani. We'll get you the Flying Dutchman's defense on the next Delaware Valley possession. First and 10 off the four yard pickup for John Davis. Aggies with three wide receivers, Davis, Barksdale, and Aaron Nelson to the far side. Morgan is the lone man and there's the throw to Barksdale. Barksdale unable to get free. Good job. Nice tackle there by Tyler Lutz. Makes the stop for a loss of two. Barksdale, instead of cutting inside where John Davis was trying to block for him, he cut it outside. And the graduate school student from Mannheim, Pennsylvania, blows that up. Leader of that linebacking core for Lebval. Second and 12 for Delaware Valley. First drive of the game for the Aggies. Flying Dutchman went three and out on their first possession. We are scoreless early in the first quarter. And Bohannon will run ahead and just basically back to the original line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Jake Marcus, the sophomore from Glen Burnie, Maryland. They'll bring up a third and 10 as the Aggies, if you follow Delaware Valley for any period of time, you know these are pretty much two down territory all the time. They very rarely attempt field goals. They have just one made all year, and they've only attempted three or four. So two downs to try and get 10 yards here on the opening drive for the Aggies of the game. Twins to the bottom, Davis and Nelson, as Bohannon takes a snap. Excellent time. Throws across the middle, and the pass is caught. And all the way down at the two-yard line is John Davis. What a throw from Bohannon. <laughs> An absolute laser cutting through the defense. And that will set up a first and goal at the three. Great hands from John Davis as well. John Davis with his 12th catch of the year for about 150 yards. And he and Barksdale are the two utility knives on offense that they will use lots of different ways. Flying Dutchman take a timeout. And first and goal for the Aggies coming up. I don't know. I don't know if that was really a, an injury timeout is the, is the call, is there was a hurt player for Lebanon Valley who did manage to get to the sidelines, and so they're going to continue play, even though they announced an injury timeout. He got off the field to play and is getting attention, and nope, now they're going to shoo Delaware, both teams away from the ball and just take the injury timeout. One of five games in the Middle Atlantic Conference today. One of them already at the half, a 12 o'clock start. FDU Florham looking to get back on track after losing a couple of games. The Devils on top of Albright, 27 to 14. Stevenson looking for its third win in a row. They lead Alvernia 7 to nothing, two minutes in. Both of those games in Reading, one at the top of the hill at Albright and one at the bottom of the hill at Alvernia. 
First and goal from the three here, Bohannon with Quaddy Struthers coming in motion. Bohannon keeps it himself, and for the sixth week in a row, touchdown, Daquan Bohannon. Bohannon's ninth rushing touchdown of the season. He leads the conference in that category, and he's, again, good for one or more a week. And Bohannon showing off the arm and the legs on that drive, and the Aggies quickly in front six to nothing. Extra point coming up here. Timmy Lawless to hold, Shane Oros to snap, and the kick is up and good. Splitting the uprights is Jack Hughes, 18 for 24 on the season, and then the Aggies looking sharp in the opening minutes here of the first half, or first quarter, halfway through the opening period here on homecoming day, Aggies lead seven to nothing. Delaware Valley to kick it away. An efficient 46-yard drive for the Aggies. Two-thirds downs, both converted. Capped by the four-yard running touchdown by Daquan Bohannon, his ninth of the season. The Aggies have the top two guys in terms of rushing uh, touchdowns in the conference, Bohannon and then Dante Simmons, who has seven. Niemeyer awaits the kick. This one will land in the arms of Niemeyer at his own 16. Started one way, went the other. And out of bounds at about the 27. Chased out of bounds by the Aggies' Naughty Jones, freshman, 32. Makes the stop. And let's get you the Delaware Valley starting defense, who only saw three plays on the first possession. Well, we already said his name once. He blew up that third down last time, but Yusef Aladinov has been a... Absolute star the last few weeks. The junior from Huntington Valley, along with Sebastian Mon Louis, Shamir Vessels, and Anthony Nobile, who was the team's defensive player of the week. Anthony, 30 tackles. He had a rare interception. You don't get your defensive tackles getting too many of those, but he had one last week. First and 10, handoff to the fullback, and he runs into Trent Freeze, who knocks him flat after a gain of about a yard. Good a time as any to mention the linebacking core. Trent Freeze in the middle. Aaron Myers and, as we mentioned earlier on, Anthony Tedesco, who really anchors the Aggies' defense. He's led the team in tackles just about every single week and leads them on the season with 61. Aggies' secondary did not see a lot of action last week against a run-heavy misericordia. Not sure they will this week either. Justin Harris and Jameer Prevard, both, one is an All-American, one probably should be. And Dante Mason and Blaine Netterman are the safeties who are also very, very good. Best secondary in the conference by far. Second and nine, and Bohannon will test that secondary. Rolls, and lucky he threw that away because Prevard had stepped in front of it and was ready to go the other way. It's third and nine coming up for the Flying Dutchman. We gave you the numbers, and again, they're extremely good. In fact, better than every other one of the 239 Division Three football teams. Aggies giving up under 119 yards per game overall. 33, under 33 yards on the ground, 86 through the air. Teams are just 19% against them on third downs, and Flying Dutchman are 0 for 1 so far today. Third and nine coming up here for the Flying Dutchman. Bohannon has brought Malachi Williams in at tailback. Bohannon dropping back. Here comes Aladdin off from behind, and he got him again. Now the ball scoop, scooped up, but they're going to say that he was down as Ahmad Jones was returning it the other way. But there's Aladdin off again, who's got great speed. Youssef was a lineman, a down lineman with the Nobile brothers last year. They converted him to linebacker when Shamir Vessels transferred in. 
And then with Michael Nobile gone for the season, they've put him back in his old position. And the Turkish terror can do just about everything. Fourth and nine. Six plays for the Flying Dutchman, about five yards. And the Aggies are offside, so this will be a free five. Barksdale catches at his own 30. This will all be academic. Barksdale, good return. Well, an okay return to the 44, but it's all coming back anyway because of the offsides by DelVal. Does the Flying Dutchman want to back him up five or take the five yards? And I don't think they would go for it here, but see what they want to do. They're going to decline and just push Delaware Valley back five. Well, actually, you don't even do that. Let the officials make the call. All right, so Flying Dutchman content to hold Barksdale to a modest return, and the Aggies will take over at their own 43. Lebanon Valley has not had a good year punting the ball. Their punter averaging just 32 yards per punt. So if you're wondering why they don't give them a chance to try and boom it, they have learned better than to take that chance so far this year. Daquan Bohannon, the quarterback, back out in the shotgun. Rolling to the right, and the pass is caught. This is Aaron Nelson, I believe. And Nelson, well... <laughs> Saw a big open si space on the completely other side of the field, but Sean Fester prevents him from getting there. It's a seven-yard gain. Let's get you the Lebanon Valley Flying uh, Dutchman defense. We mentioned Brandon Brubaker in the pregame. He's by far their defensive leader. Across the front four, he's joined by Ben Siegfried, Tom Miller, and Sean Fester, who had that tackle right there. Brubaker's 60 tackles on the year. Senior from Reinholds, Pennsylvania. Second and three for Delaware Valley from midfield. Bohannon on the handoff. Simmons looking for space, and a flag comes in as I think the tackler got Simmons up around the head. Eric Williams, the strong safety, made the stop. We'll see what the flag is. Third and three would be the play from scrimmage. Let's see what the call is, though. Williams, not intentionally, but doesn't matter. Face mask penalty on the Flying Dutchman will give the Aggies a free 15 and the first down. Flying Dutchman's defense, they run a 4-3, so the three linebackers, Tyler Lutz, we talked about him on the first possession, Ryan Gibney and Dylan Estes from Willow, uh, West Grove, Pennsylvania. Willow Grove would be around here. West Grove would be out near them. First and 10 for the Aggies at the 35, leading 7 to nothing, And a flag on the play. Ron Goodwin with an offsides penalty, and we'll make it first and 15. Flying Dutchman's secondary. Your corners are senior Dre Birch and Grant Gomer. Three safeties, two sophomores, Brent Moody and Eric Williams. Williams with three picks and three passes broken up this year. And they're going to test the secondary now. Bohannon throwing down the field. He's got a man open and incomplete and intercepted. The officials just missed the fact that the cornerback just grabbed. Well, there's the flag. Never mind. <laughs> the cornerback was beaten so badly that he just grabbed Morgan and held on for dear life. And the officials did catch that. So should be 15-yard penalty and a first down to wipe out the interception. Morgan, freshman with big speed. And that's Eric Williams again, so rough, rough series here for him. Aggies with 37 yards on this drive, very few of them of their own doing. First and 10 for Delaware Valley from there, from the Lebval 25. 
Nelson, Davis, Barksdale to one side, Morgan to the other. Simmons to the right of Bohannon, and they give it to him on the draw. Dante, and this one will also coming back as there will be a holding penalty on DelVal. So it's four plays in a row with penalties. Austin Regan, the offending party there, will make it first and 20. Five fourteen to play, a fast moving first quarter, not a big surprise. Both teams are favor the run. Morgan to the bottom of the formation. Man comes in motion and the handoff goes to Quaddy Struthers. First touch for Quaddy in quite a while. And Struthers carries it for five yards. Struthers Split action with Simmons early in the year, but have not used him as much over the last few weeks. Second and 15 for Delaware Valley. As Julian White and Struthers check out of the game. Ryan Laughlin in at wide receiver. Along with Barksdale to the top of your screen. Flying Dutchman with a four-man front. Aaron Nelson to the bottom of the uh, screen. And he'll just hand it off to Simmons on second and 15. And Simmons rips through a couple of tacklers, still on his feet. And good effort there from Simmons. Pick up of about four. It'll be third and 11. As Tyler Lutz eventually makes the tackle there for the Flying Dutchman. Julian White checking in for Delaware Valley along with 83. That's the Aggies starting tight end Bryce Dorsey. Dorsey, seven catches for 92 yards and a score. Aggies coming off a season where Dan Allen was the best tight end in the country, or two seasons ago, I guess, because of COVID. And the Aggies will be forced to use a timeout here. 3.38 to play in the first quarter. Delaware Valley on top, seven to nothing. Aggies looking for their 34th consecutive win against the Middle Atlantic Conference foe. That is the longest streak in conference history. Aggies broke the record, which was 25, held by Lycoming last year. Last loss was to Stevenson about four years ago. Bohannon on third and 11, and he is sacked, and the ball is fumbled and scooped up eventually by Julian White. And it'll be fourth and very, very long. Getting there and making the sack. That's 45 again who had the tackle, even though he was not on the two deep. He's had a good start to the game. It's Noah called Donnie. And the Aggies will punt on fourth and uh, close to 20. Flying Dutchman will send two guys back. Niemeyer and one of the number ones. I think this is Jay Sisko. Kick is off the front of the foot, which is fine. Sisko makes the catch at his own 14. So Kaldani with the sack, forcing a fumble, and he shuts that drive down. Flying Dutchman come back out down seven to nothing. Get you a look at the Middle Atlantic Conference scoreboard. All of these games, except for one in the first half. Stevenson and Alvernia, that is seven to six now. Stevenson on top there. Alvernia looking for their first win of the season. No score reported from Kings and Misericordia. Cougars hosting 
in that battle of Northeast Pennsylvania schools. Wilkes lead Lycoming seven to nothing. That ball was fumbled on the snap and the Aggies say they have it. Bad exchange and let's see, no, there it is, Delaware Valley ball. Bad exchange and the Aggies dive on it. Now it was not Aladinoff who has <laughs> five fumble recoveries on the season, it was Anthony Nobile at the bottom of the pile. 21st uh, turnover of the year by an Aggie opponent. I'm not sure we could call that one forced, but they'll take it nevertheless. For well, the Flying Dutch, that is their 10th turnover this year. Nine interceptions, or excuse me, six interceptions and four fumbles. We have the, have the, high, uh, the uh, replay there. It was just lost on the fumble, and, or on the... Uh, Snap, the Aggies have it inside the 20 to start this drive. Hand off to Dante Simmons. Simmons with a good head of speed, and this is not going to count because, again, there's a holding penalty. Yep. I think they're going to get Bam Banofti this time, and the Aggies got a case of the grabbies here on offense. It's the third holding penalty of the game already. Second, uh, first and 20 for Delaware Valley. Been a messy few minutes here. The last seven or eight snaps, penalty, penalty, run, penalty, 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 fumble <laughs> for the two teams. First and 20, Aggies up seven to nothing. Bohannon. Daquan will run. Puts the ball away and cut down after a pickup of all, well, a one or two. Nicely done by Jordan Bowie, the senior from York, Pennsylvania. The nickelback comes up to chop Bohannon down. Daquan yeah, got maybe a little more than I thought he got. Nah, not really. He got two. So second and 16. Morgan to the top of the formation. Aaron Nelson to the bottom. And a handoff to Dante. No flags this time. Dante rips right through the middle of the defense. And needed 16. He got about 13. It'll be third and three or so from the eight. Ben Scherer making the tackle, or Brad Shear, excuse me, the senior making the tackle from Greencastle. You've got a Shearer and a Shearer on defense. So third and manageable now for the Aggies who could get to the four without scoring. Davis, Nelson, top of the formation. Simmons and Barksdale comes in motion. Bohannon takes a snap. Throwing underneath, catch is made, touchdown. That's Ryan Laughlin. First touchdown of the career for the sophomore from Southampton. Now they lined all their experienced receivers up on one side and then put Ryan Laughlin on an island and Laughlin beat his man. Ryan, another one of those guys who does not see much action over the last few weeks, but obviously a team favorite. <laughs> Kick is away, it is up, and it is good. So 57 seconds to play in the first quarter. Aggies take advantage to get a look at the touchdown here. Bottom of the screen. And Bohannon just beautiful throw. Good job by Laughlin to run that, or Laughlin to run that pattern. He turns it to the right side and Basically seals off all, both of the defenders on him. Now the Delaware Valley defense has set up the offense so many times this year. And there's not an official stat for this, but the Aggies have had something like seven or eight one possession drives by opponents where the very first play is a turnover. And this was the case right there.
Cameron Niemeyer and Horan Thomas, freshman from Harrisburg, are back to return the kick for the Flying Dutchman. Pat Moran and Jack Hughes kind of splitting the place kicking duties for the Aggies. This is Moran here. A wobbler that Niemeyer will feel the line drive. Good return here for Niemeyer who gets to about the 41 yard line for his forced out of bounds. Aaron Myers, the senior from the Bronx, New York, with the force out. Flying Dutchman take over. They have only run seven plays here in the first quarter for seven yards or so. And that is not an unusual line. Delaware Valley, through the first two weeks of the season, was giving up two feet per play. Braden Bohannon at quarterback. And that should have been a holding penalty as Aladinoff was grabbed, but no call. Bohannon gets about three yards. And that, well, it could be the last play of the first quarter. There's no wind to speak of here. It's overcast. Pretty warm. About as good a we as nice a weather as you can ask for here in very late October with Halloween tomorrow. Second and seven off the three-yard pickup for Braden. Irvy to his left. Irvy has not touched the ball yet. Now he has. And he's dropped for a loss of two, and there's a flag on the play. Tim Irvy dropped, and it's a holding penalty on Lebanon Valley, and the Aggies will take it, I'm sure. Wherever they held, it didn't matter because Irvy was pretty much dead to rights as soon as he touched the ball. They say 95, but that can't be right because 95 is a defensive lineman. So, But whoever it was holding penalty. They get second and about 17, and the Flying Dutchman will, I think, I think they have, do they run an untimed play here? That was the last play of the first quarter. Yeah, there is an untimed play here because it can't end on a, can't end on a penalty. So second and 17 for the Flying Dutchman. Andrew Olson to the top of the formation. I think that's Niemeyer slotted inside of him. Bohannon will head in that direction. Bohannon looking, and I don't know who Braden was throwing to as he fires it over the top of everybody incomplete. So that is now the end of the third, the first quarter, and Delaware Valley We'll try and get another three and out on the Flying Dutchman here, third and 17 to start the second quarter coming up. Keep an eye on the Lycoming-Wilkes game. If Lycoming wins, the Aggies can win a share of the conference and the automatic bid next week. If Wilkes wins, the Aggies could win a share of the conference of the automatic bid next week. So I guess it doesn't make, it's not as big a game as I thought. <laughs> the wild card there is is Widener, and Widener lost their second game of the year. Widener with loss to f losses to Florham and Stevenson. So the pride, it's effectively a three-team race. DelVal, Lycoming is five and two, but one of those losses is non-conference. So the, the, the Warriors are four and one in conference as is Wilkes, Delaware Valley 5-0. and oh. Even with a loss, Wilkes would still have a chance to tie for the conference title. They need the Aggies to lose two games. 
Bohannon on third and 17, handoff and oof. Nowhere for Malachi Williams to go. He is dropped for a loss of three. As Shamir Vessels flattens him. And it's fourth and close to 20. Vessels transferred from Wesley, which closed its program. Wessels was an all-conference honoree for the Wolverines, and he has shown why throughout this season. He's taken a, an excellent defense and made it elite. Three four drives, 13 yards for the Flying Dutchman, or 14 plays, I should say. One of them a fumble. And a high short kick. That will take a Flying Dutchman bounce and shoot out of bounds at around the, or say the 37 where the Aggies will take over. Wilkes and Lycoming tied at seven. Early stages of the second quarter in Williamsport. Delaware Valley comes back out, now leading 14 to nothing. You've got Bohannon with Simmons in the backfield. We didn't mention him before, but Walt Truxel's the team's starting fullback, number 47. Bohannon under trouble in under duress, throws down the field incomplete. Good coverage on the play. As Lebanon Valley. Grant Gomer and Eric Williams both back in coverage. Well, the guy who was running stride for stride with Nelson was Nick Mortar, a freshman, 36. Hand off to Simmons. Simmons waits for the play to develop. Cuts back against the defense, and Simmons with about 11 yards. Nice carry there by Dante. Jake Marcus makes the tackle after the 11-yard gain, and the Aggies with another first down. Thirteen thirty-nine to play here in the first half. Delaware Valley looking good. Thus far with a 14 to nothing lead. Isaiah Calhoun, sophomore to the bottom of the formation. And the pass goes to Isaiah. And Isaiah tripped up. Got a pickup of about eight yards on the play. Calhoun gets it into Lebval territory. Do our prep before the game, but the Flying Dutchmen have not stuck to the two deep on defense. <laughs> that was Josh Hathaway, the freshman, making the tackle for the Flying Dutchman. Bohannon, this play is blown dead. Second and eight, call it seven for DelVal. Delaware Valley, as we've mentioned the last few weeks, statistically the most penalized team in the country, 115 yards per game. There's a player down for, Will, uh, for LeBval. Dropping to a knee is Dylan Estes. Dylan needs a second. Senior linebacker from West Grove checks out. Neither of these teams played at all last year. We said throughout the season that with COVID, some of the programs played some games in the spring. Some did not. Delaware Valley just 
played against itself in some spring ball. Lebanon Valley, the same thing. The Flying Dutchman had initially scheduled one game with Franklin and Marshall, but were unable to pull that off. Second and seven off the injury timeout. And the handoff goes to Julian White. White makes a spin to make one guy miss. And brought down by the next three. Brandon Brubaker gets to him. Just a pickup of about maybe one for Julian. And it'll be third and six. Dillian Estes has checked back in, so apparently he's feeling okay. Flying Dutchman showing a blitz. They bring the pressure, and Bohannon steps through the line. Daquan Bohannon into the arms of Brandon Brubaker. Tough two yards for Daquan Bohannon to bring up a fourth and four for Delaware Valley. Good job by the Flying Dutchman defense there to send the blitz and disrupt that. Good job, Shad. That time of year where we're under siege by sleepy yellow jackets and hornets. Cameraman wipes that one out. Fourth and four, the Aggies are gonna go for it. Up 14 to nothing. Defense has not allowed a first down yet. Aggies on the season, 10 for 19 on fourth. They're gonna run it too, and it's Simmons and he does not get anywhere close. And here comes a very late flag, though. Let's see what that is. Simmons has dropped. He only got a yard. Flying Dutchman have the ball. And apparently, the penalty is on Del Val. So the Aggies take a chance and go for it on fourth down from close to midfield, and they don't get close. <laughs> they needed four, and they got a yard. And the Flying Dutchman will take over at about the their own 44. It's a conservative call there on fourth and four for the Aggies. You got Simmons catching that eight yards away from where he needs to get for the first down and then unable to get anywhere close. Malachi Williams into the game. Lost two yards on his only touch so far. And the Flying Dutchmen are gonna need a timeout here with 10.54 to play in the second quarter. Ian Merhan has checked in at running back, senior from New Philadelphia. Familiar face on the sidelines as we look down here on homecoming day. It's Rashid Bailey, the Aggies all-time receiving leader. Rashid wearing the Winnipeg Blue Bombers sweatshirt. Rashid a professional player in the Canadian Football League. Won a title with the Blue Bombers last year. Played in the NFL with Jacksonville and Cleveland and the Eagles. First and 10, the quarterback kept it and he got hammered. That is Kelvin Brown, the freshman who runs him over. Loss of one on the play. Freshman from York. With a big hit. Second and 11 coming up. Aggies with a couple of second team guys out there on defense, Kelvin Brown and Sean Balkum, two freshmen, 99 and 97, they would be at the bottom of your screen. In fact, three of the four down linemen for the Aggies right now are freshmen, along with Sebastian Monlouis. So this is the 
This is the youth wave here. And handoff. About four or five before Blaine Netterman makes the hit. Third and six for the Flying Dutchman, looking for their first first down, trailing 14 to nothing. clock started very late just now at 30 seconds the Flying Dutchman need to get to the Delaware Valley 46 for the first down Bohannon out of the shotgun two wide receivers at the top of the formation got Tim Irvy to his left Bohannon will run and no not anywhere close. Young defensive line with a couple of tackles for loss on that possession. Three and out for the fourth time today for the Flying Dutchman. 8.31 to play. The punter comes back out. That's Jeremy Boers Jr. Marksdale stands at his own 21. Ooh, and a flag on the play and the Flying Dutchman are gonna get this back. So Barksdale for the second time is returning a punt for no reason. <laughs> and the Flying Dutchmen are going to get a first down. Rough break there for the Aggies as Ahmad Jones tried to get to the block and missed it and ended up landing on the punter instead. And that will give the Flying Dutchman the first down. Officials taking a long time to discuss what looked like a fairly straightforward call. Unless there was a second foul flag we did not see. So the, that was the confusion whether there was one or two infractions on Delval. The block in the back doesn't end up meaning anything. It's the hit on the punter that does. And again, similar to Eric Williams' face mask earlier, no ill intent, but doesn't matter. Flying Dutchman will get their first first down of the day via the penalty, and they'll take over at the Delaware Valley 38. Irvy the deep back, out of the eye. And Bohannon gives it to Irvy, and again, nothing. Anthony Tedesco makes the tackle along with Trent Freeze. Irvy lands two yards behind the line of scrimmage. They'll say he got back to it, so no gain. It's second and 10. Cameron Niemeyer and Andrew Olson to the bottom of the formation. Flying Dutchman have not thrown the ball much here and would prefer not to. Second and 10 out of the eye. Bohannon fakes, he's under pressure. He will throw the ball back and it is caught by Cameron Niemeyer. Niemeyer with the basket catch and the Flying Dutchman down to the 18. 
Good touch there from Bohannon as Aaron Myers was applying the pressure, but just good touch from Bohannon and the best play of the day for the Flying Dutchman has him inside the 20. Nice throw. Anthony Tedisco was in coverage and trying to get back, but unable to do so. Irvy to the right of Bohannon. First play from the red zone for the Flying Dutchman, down 14 to nothing. Bohannon, good time, looking, firing, and incomplete. Back of the end zone, three different Aggies back there. Cole Kitchen, the closest to it, it's second and 10. Flying Dutchman on the year from the red zone, 16 for 18, but only 10 touchdowns. Kevin Roberts, the freshman, has is six for six on field goals, but he's not listed as the starter at that position. It's Garrett Thomas who is. Second and 10, Irvy to the left of Bohannon again. This time they fake the wide receiver screen and the quarterback is smashed for a loss of one and a half. Keep trying to run misdirection, but it doesn't matter because the Aggies are on top of the guy as soon as he keeps the ball. Bohannon loses one. Anthony Nobile with the tackle for loss, and it's third and 11. I would think this is two down territory, but not really sure. Thomas, the starter, as long as the year is 31. We'll try and make it a moot point. Third and 11 out of the eye. Drop it back, pass thrown, and that's fading off the field, incomplete. Not catchable, Justin Harris in coverage. And it's fourth and 11 for the Flying Dutchman, and they're gonna bring in the field goal unit. So it will be Kevin Roberts who comes out. 5'10 freshman from Falston, Maryland. We'll try and get points here for the Flying Dutchman. Number 93. This is a 37 yard attempt. Would be as long as of the year. Flying Dutchman are six for six this year on field goals. On fourth and 11. Kick is away, it is good. But there's a flag on the play and I think the Flying Dutchmen are gonna get a first down on roughing the kicker. So the Aggies for the second time on this drive have roughed the kicker. I would think they'll, well, I would think they'll take the yards, right? Yeah. Well, second time on this drive, the Aggies have attempt have roughed the kicker, and as good as the Aggies have been, 7-0, top 10 in the country, these types of mistakes just ca keep happening over and over and over and over. The Aggies are already approaching 80 yards of penalties here in the first half, and they have not seen a team yet, talent-wise, who could make them pay for it, but eventually they will. Hand off to Irvy, and Irvy with a decent run. First and goal from the nine or so, he gets to the six. Kind of unfortunate for Kevin Roberts. He hit that 37 yards and had plenty of distance. Nice field goal, just took it off the board for him. They'll try and get six instead. This drive should have been over three and out, but the Aggies roughed the punter. Then it should have been over after a field goal, but the Aggies roughed the kicker. Irvy out of the eye, Bohannon behind his center. This time Braden will throw. And I don't know who he's throwing to. It's a, when Braden throws it incomplete, they are really incomplete. <laughs> they are nowhere near anybody. <laughs> he's not fooling around. Nobile and Tedisco and uh, in pursuit there along with, is that 
I think it's Mon Louis again, 90. Nope, that's Aladinov, 50. So third and goal from the six, and the Aggies will try and force Kevin Roberts to kick from a lot shorter distance here if they can get a stop. Olsen to the top of the formation. Ball rolls off its spot. This drive started for, Delaware, for Lebanon Valley after DelVal went for it from midfield on fourth and four. Bohannon rolls, throws, and again, 15 yards off the field, incomplete. And now Kevin Roberts will come back out for a much shorter attempt. Cameron Niemeyer, the intended receiver. Third, fourth down of this drive. So Roberts, the... Given what we saw a moment ago, this should be no problem at all. Jeremy Boers, the sophomore quarterback, is the holder, also the punter. Roberts lines it up. This is a 28-yarder. Nope, shorter than that, 24-yarder. And it's good. So a long drive for Lebanon Valley in terms of time, not in terms of yards, but in terms of time, culminates in a 24-yard Kevin Roberts field goal, Aggies lead 14 to three. Scoreboard update for you. Lebanon, Val or, uh, Lebanon Valley and FDU Florham played an overtime game earlier this year. Albright and Florham may be headed towards the same thing. FDU Florham led 27 to 10. It's now 28 or 27 to 7. Now it's 28 27 Albright on top. Stevenson leading Alvernia 21 to 6. That game's at the half. Lycoming has scored again. They've gone in front of Wilkes 14 to nothing or 14 to 7. Right here, 14 to three after the 24 yard field goal from Kevin Roberts, who's seven for seven, and the ball wobbles off its tee. We'll try it again. And Garrett might need some help here. Garrett. Thomas, the junior from Wilmington, Delaware, has it back on its tee. Aggies with Jameer, Prevard, and Tavian Dorsey back to return. They've used about six different guys to return a very small number of kicks. This is Prevard. 15, 25, 30, and down to the 42 goes Jameer Prevard. Good return from Jameer. The Aggies starting cornerback gives Delaware Valley good field position to start. They'll start at their own 42. Dante Simmons back out at tailback. Daquan Bohannon at quarterback. Bohannon with one touchdown on the ground and one through the air to Ryan Laughlin. Quick throw here to Tamir Barksdale, and he is smoked. <laughs> Loss of one on the play as he is run over by Dre Birch from Yardley. Number 83, Bryce Dorsey just missed his block, and Birch went right through Barksdale as soon as he caught the ball. Second and 11 coming up. Nelson and Barksdale to the top of the formation. Sear Morgan to the bottom. And Barksdale takes off with nobody else moving. So that's five more yards back in the other direction. And the Aggies continue to shoot themselves in the foot rapid fire. Second and 17 for DelVal. 
again, they have not played a team this year that has been talented enough to make them pay for these kinds of mistakes, but they will eventually. Could be as soon as next week or the week after that when they take on Wilkes or Widener, and if not, it will definitely happen in the playoffs. Second and 17. Throw across the middle, great catch. That's Des Austin, the senior from Pottstown, Pennsylvania, with the great catch. And the Aggies get 17 plus on that. They're down to the Flying Dutchman, 38 for a first down. Bohannon's throws have been right on the mark all day. Des Austin has not had a lot of action this year. Nice catch there. Nelson, Davis, and Barksdale to the top of the formation. Morgan to the bottom. Tamir comes in motion. They're going to hand the ball off to Julian White, and White goes right, oh, excuse me, that's May, uh, Simmons who goes right up the middle for 13. And Delaware Valley down to the Flying Dutchman, 25. 3 2 to play here in the first half. Aggies have one timeout left. Flying Dutchman have two. Aggies would also get the ball to start the second half. Nelson and Barksdale to the bottom of the top of the formation. Simmons remains in the game. And Bohannon pitches it to Dante, and Dante is crushed. Loss of three on the play. Aggies don't run a lot of option. They tried something there, and Neither option looked very good. They ended up losing three yards. Dre Birch with the tackle for loss, second time on this possession. Aggies do run a lot of different types of plays. They've been a very co uh, creative offense, really going back to when G.A. Mangus was the head coach here and turned this program around from a perennial doormat into what it is now. Bohannon. Throws incomplete. First real bad throw there for Bohannon as he was just way off the mark looking for Aaron Nelson. Third and 13 for Delaware Valley. G.A. Mangus came here after being the offensive coordinator at Widener University. Brought a bunch of coaches with him, some of them still here at Del Val. Greg Fiedek, the offensive line coach, came. He's another Widener product. Jim Clements was Mangus' defensive coordinator. Bohannon steps up in the pocket. He's got some space. Oh, my, Bohannon <laughs> runs over the defender. Now, they're saying he's down at the 20, at the 14, at the 16, but his body landed beyond the 15. Fourth and one. We've said before that once Bohannon gets going, as we're now besieged by Yellow Jackets, once Bohannon gets going, he's like trying to tackle a refrigerator. Fourth and one. Aggies will go for it, 0 for 1 today. And they get it here, but the ball comes loose. And the Flying Dutchman have it. So the Aggies get the first down, but don't hang on to the ball. And the Flying Dutchman will take over at their own three. Uh, a little better than that, their own six. First turnover of the day for Delaware Valley. Flying Dutchman with their 11th forced. That's their first fumble recovery of the year for Lebanon Valley in game number eight. A little weird. One twenty-five to play here in the first half. Flying Dutchman back at their own six. Have not done much on offense. They got three points off a penalty off the driver. The Aggies had 30 yards of penalties when they started at their own 45. So defense has played very, very well. And Irvy is immediately hit and crushed. That's Shamir Vessels again, no gain. They'll give him half a yard. That's a very generous spot as Irvy. Yeah. 
57 seconds to play. The Flying Dutchman may want to think about just running out the clock and an offense that has done very, very little and a punting team that is averaging about 30 yards per punt. I don't know that you really want to take a chance here. Second and nine. Hand off, Irvy. Or excuse me, that's not Irvy. That's a different tailback. Basically the same result, though. The Aggies will use their last timeout. This is Jacob Schermeyer, who's had the last two carries. And it'll be third and seven or so for the Flying Dutchman. That's the out, uh, Aggies' last timeout here. Delaware Valley leading this one 14 to nothing. <coughs> Have not played very cleanly. A bunch of penalties, including a bunch to sustain Lebanon Valley's lone scoring drive. And then on lost offensive drive, they get the first down and fumble the ball away on fourth and one. Third and seven here, and it's going to be third and longer than that as the Flying Dutchman flinch. Jacob Phillips, the offending party there. And the Flying Dutchman, who have had just one play over 10 yards, are going to need 11 here to sustain this drive. And I would think they're going to play, they could just take a knee if they want here. They don't have to do anything. Aggies don't have a timeout. Hand the ball off. And it's effectively the same thing. And that will be, unless the Flying Dutchman call timeout, which I don't know why they would, that'll be the last play of the first half. Why would Lebanon Valley call a timeout there? I guess the Aggies had one more timeout. I think the officials pointed the wrong way. Yeah, there we go. They just corrected it. That makes more sense. So the Aggies did have one more timeout. I did not think they did. So it'll be fourth and six, and the Flying Dutchman, who've struggled to punt the ball will this season, will have to do so here from deep in their own end zone. <laughs> Barksdale stands at his, well, at the Lebanon Valley. We'll see where he eventually paces it off, but it looks like the 45. Longest punt of the year for Jeremy Boers Jr., the freshman from Cleona, is 43 yards. He's averaging just 32 per kick. And the freshman stands three yards deep. No pressure at all, and he kicked it off the side of his foot out of bounds. Oh, my. Boers kicked it with absolutely no pressure off the side of his foot, and now we get a flag. I'm not sure what the flag is, but the flag is like 15 seconds after the play is over and there's nobody standing on the field, so. Oh, sideline warning. <laughs> I think they were going after the ball because of where it landed. The Aggies will have the ball at the nine. That is a one yard punt for Jeremy Boers. Oof. <laughs> we said that's why they may want to just take a knee and run out the clock here so that they did not have to punt. So the Aggies <laughs> will have it first and goal with no timeouts from the nine. And truthfully, this whole quarter has been a comedy of errors for both teams. It is, it is not going into the fundamentals of Football Hall of Fame, that's for certain. I did not get them, you're right. I got him the second time. 
Don't land in my pretzels. And now Lebanon Valley calls timeout. Well, I'm going to give Boers the benefit of the doubt here and say maybe he was just thrown by the fact that you don't expect there to be absolutely zero pressure when you're standing in the end zone, and there was none. The Aggies' front nine players just stood straight up, didn't even bother to go after the kick, and Boers shanks it. The Aggies, I would think, will run one play and then attempt a field goal, although that is not their strong suit either. So with no timeouts, pretty much everything, 23 seconds, well, if you wanted to run something to the sideline, you could, I guess. Aggies bring Ralph Hyland, the senior tailback, out from Philadelphia. He stands to the right of Bohannon. Trips to the top of the formation, Morgan alone to the bottom. First and goal from the nine. Bohannon throws a jump ball for Morgan. He's out of bounds, I think. Yeah, he catches it, but he's out of bounds. So incomplete. So 17 seconds to play. Nice catch by Morgan, but feet landed out of bounds. Aggies have run that play a bunch this year with either Nasir Morgan or Isaiah Calhoun. They're two tall, wide receivers. Both young guys, too. One a freshman, one a sophomore. Same formation as a moment ago. See what they run here on second and goal from the nine. Barksdale in motion. Bohannon looking the same direction. Nope. Throws it and through the hands of Barksdale, who could not hang on. Incomplete third and goal from the 12. Well, that was a fast ball, but Barksdale had it slip through his hands. Well, we, th we thought that, the, uh, that this was going to be a very uneventful 30 seconds to close the half because we thought the Aggies were out of timeouts. They had one left. Flying Dutchman had a one-yard punt. And the Aggies have missed on their first two attempts to the end zone. Trying to make it a three-score lead. Bohannon. He will think about running. Well, going to get rid of it. And he throws it to the sidelines and complete. And the Aggies are going to bring the field goal unit on for just their, what would be their second field goal of the year if they can convert it. Four seconds to play. Good coverage there from Lebval. Good decision from Bohannon, too, who knew that if he ran it and was stopped, that that would be the end of the half. So the, they will get a chance to kick a field goal here. 26-yard attempt for Jack Hughes. And it is good. So the way the first half comes to a close is just the second field goal of the year for Delaware Valley and the first for Jack Hughes. It's a 17-3 lead at the half. We'll take a break for... A bunch of minutes, let the camera roll so you can watch what's going on here on Homecoming and come back for your second half.
Welcome back, Delaware Valley. Leads here at the half, a score of 17 to three. <coughs> Your scoring summary, Delaware Valley's took over first drive of the game, very efficient for the Aggies, marched down the field. Daquan Bohannon caps it with a three yard touchdown run. After setting up the Aggies for first and goal from the three with a nice pass to John Davis. Extra point by Jack Hughes was good, who had a good first half. Aggies had a seven to nothing lead. Flying Dutchman on their first two possessions with three and out on their third, it was worse than that. They went one and out as they fumbled the snap. The Aggies took over from the 11. And a couple of plays later, Daquan Bohannon found Ryan Laughlin in the end zone for the touchdown. Extra point by Hughes was good again. Neither team did much offensively from that point on. The Aggies had a fourth and four from the Lebanon Valley 45. They went for it. They were stopped well short. Lebanon Valley took over at their own 41. Didn't do anything with it, but on fourth and seven, the Aggies committed a roughing the punter penalty, which gave the Flying Dutchman 15 yards in the Aggies' territory. A kind of duck and chuck by the quarterback to connect it with Cameron Niemeyer out of bounds for 20 yards or so. That was the Flying Dutchman's best play of the half. Aggies got the stop again. Flying Dutchman came out to attempt a field goal, and the Aggies committed another roughing the kicker penalty. Moving the Flying Dutchman inside the 10, but the but LVC was unable to get into the end zone. Kevin Roberts eventually kicked a 24-yard field goal to make it 14-3. to The Aggies went down the field, fumbled the ball on a fourth and one. They picked it up, and then they picked up the yardage but lost the ball. The Flying Dutchman took over inside their own 10, and instead of, well, I guess they had two timeouts. They really needed to move the ball forward <coughs> a little bit and were unable to move it at all. Aggies used both of their timeouts, and the Flying Dutchman on a fourth down punt from their own end zone. The punt went literally one yard. Aggies took over at their own not at the Lebanon Valley nine with 23 seconds to play. <coughs> Excuse me, three incomplete passes. And then the Aggies brought Jack Hughes on for his first field goal of the year, and that's what takes us to the score of 17 to three. Taking a look, <coughs> excuse me, taking a look at the Middle Atlantic Conference scoreboard for you. FDU Florham and Albright have both played a lot of exciting games and they're playing one again today, this time against each other. FDU Florham had a 27 to seven lead at one point. Albright came back to make it 28-27. Florham scored and went for two to make it 35-28. And then Albright just went for it on fourth down and scored a touchdown. And so it's 35-35 with under nine minutes to play. And the uh, FDU Florham devils with the ball. Win for FDU Florham would guarantee their first non-losing season in a while. As Jimmy Robertson appears to have that program going in the right direction. Stevenson, after getting off to an 0-5 start, has fixed themselves and looking to win their third in a row. They're on top of Alvernia, 28-6. Stevenson with a big win over Widener last week to pretty much push the pride out of the conference title picture. Lycoming continues to lead Wilkes. The Warriors got 10 points in the last couple of minutes of that game. A touchdown and then a field goal at the horn by Ian Plankenhorn. As Lycoming on top of Wilkes 17-7, Delaware Valley will play Wilkes next weekend. And as we kind of figured out as we were talking it through on the air, that will be a game if the Aggies beat Wilkes next week and Wilkes loses today, then the Aggies would secure the conference championship for themselves and the automatic bid. Should they lose that game, they would have to take care of business against Widener. Lycoming, which lost to Delaware Valley earlier this year, would be in sole possession of second place with a win today. I think the Warriors play Widener next week. 
And Kings of Misericordia is the fifth game of the conference, but we don't have anything reported from Dallas, Pennsylvania, so we don't know what the score is there. Kings playing better the last couple of weeks. Kickoff coming here for the Flying Dutchman's Garrett Thomas. Good kick. No win in Brevard. We'll take it from his own two. Den, 15. And that's it. Nice, Julie Dunn. Good kick there from Garrett Thomas, who boomed that one deep, and the Aggies will take over at their own 17. Aggies starting offense, Corey Shriver, Austin Regan, Jeremy Adams, Ron Goodwin, and Bam Banavti are the front five. Receivers by the truckload for Delaware Valley, but we'll call the starters Tamir Barksdale and Nasir Morgan just in terms of snaps. Tailback is Dante Simmons, fullback is Walt Truxel, and the quarterback is the senior Daquan Bohannon. First and 10 for Delval, and the first play from scrimmage is a handoff to Simmons, and he pushes forward for close to six. Tackle made by Jake Marcus of Lebanon Valley. Starters for Lebval. I haven't mentioned a bunch of them a whole lot because they played a lot of their younger players, but Sean Fester, Tom Miller, Ben Siegfried, and Brandon Brubaker are the front four. Dylan Est is Tyler Lutz and Ryan Gibney, the linebackers. Birch and Gomner are the corners. Moody and Williams are the senior uh, the safeties. Handoff here to Quaddy Struthers. Struthers looking for a hole, and he did not find it. Pickup of Call it two for Quaddy before Tyler Lutz wraps him up. So third and short for the Aggies here. Flying Dutchman in the first half, other than that chuck and duck for Niemeyer, they did not have a first down on their own the entire first half. Four three and outs and one one and out. Trying to get the two yards here. Simmons got that and more as he tries to hurdle the defender, but he's... Got 10 yards and a first down. Eric Williams with that heavily wrapped right hand makes the tackle. Clearly got that thing in a cast. Seer Morgan will head to the top of the formation. Nelson and Struthers to the bottom of the formation. Bohannon behind center. And the handoff goes to Simmons, and he goes nowhere. Nope. I'm going to say he's down. Nicely done by Brandon Brubaker to blow that up. Lost one on the play. I don't know how Brandon managed to manage to make the tackle. He was <laughs> had a guy laying on top of him, but he made the stop anyway. Second and 11 coming up. Nelson and Quaddy Struthers to the lower side of your screen. As Quadir heads in motion. Bohannon underneath. And not a whole lot there. And a rare touch of the ball for Bryce Dorsey, the tight end, who gets two yards and will bring up third and nine. Just Dorsey's eighth catch of the year. Morgan and Dorsey to the top of the formation. And Bohannon will throw. No, Bohannon will not throw. <laughs> Daquan runs for uh, about six, but he's three yards short of the first down, and the Aggies will have to punt. Good coverage down the field from the Lebanon Valley pass defense, who's, for the most part, done a good job here today. Actually, the defense as a whole for Lebanon Valley. They gave up 45 yards on the first drive very quickly, and the second touchdown was an 11-yard drive, but nothing really since then. Giving up yards, but no points. Kick is a line drive taken by Niemeyer, who has got all kinds of green and black jerseys in front of him, so he just stops at the turf. 
First and 10 for the Flying Dutchman offense. We'll get that for you. Walter Klinger, Colin Krakowski, Nate Schaefer, Arturo Ramirez, Guzman, and Jacob Phillips are the front five. Wide receivers are Andrew Olson and Cameron Niemeyer. Tight end is Joe Underwood. Tailback for the Flying Dutch is Tim Irvey. Running back, did not see much of him in the first half, but Ian Merhon and Braden Bohannon is the Flying Dutch quarterback. First and 10 here for the Flying Dutchman, trailing by 14. First drive of the second half. And handoff, and once again, these are options without any good options. <laughs> as Bohannon held on to that as long as he could before giving it to Irvy, and Irvy is immediately pulled to the turf with no gain. Aggies defense, which has been very impressive. Yusuf Aladinoff and Sebastian Mon Louis are the ends. Shamir Vessels and Anthony Nobile, the tackles. Anthony Tedisco and Aaron Myers, the outside linebackers. Trent Fries, the inside backer. Jameer Prevard and Justin Harris, the corners who have not been tested much here today. And Mason and Netterman, the safeties. Second and 10 after no gain. Oh, handed with some time. Pass thrown down the field. Oh, he had a man open and he just missed him. That should have been six. He had Andrew Olson. Looked like he was a rare, weird motion there when he threw that. It looked like he was trying to throw a dart. But he had Olson had caught both Harris and Prevard sleeping and went by both of them. The Aggies dodge a bullet there. It'll be third and ten. Aggies right now with Cole Kitchen in at safety. Monte Mason on the sideline. Aggies have understandably played very aggressive with their safeties as the Flying Dutch have not thrown the ball much. Third and ten. And Bohannon is in trouble and he's sacked. The ball is kicked around and fumbled. Still up in the air and the Aggies have it. It's Anthony Nobile and he's gone. Touchdown. <coughs> Anthony Nobile scoops up the fumble ball and goes in for the score. Wow. Well, that play was dead the moment it started, and Bohannon was sandwiched between Aladdinoff and one other guy who I didn't catch, and the ball suddenly looked like it was made out of rubber and just started bouncing down the field with over the top of different guys and Nobile eventually picks it up and goes in for the score. Kick is away and it is up and good. Not the first touchdown of the career of Anthony Nobile. He had one last year against Kane. Now we'll take a look at the, uh, the replay here. Still nobody had right there. <laughs> Aggies with a 24 to three lead. Well, the Aggies this year have put up some really gaudy numbers on defense. They held Kane to 54 yards on 58 plays. They held Montclair State to under a yard per play. They've held teams a couple of times without a first down for an entire half. Five interceptions in a row against Lycoming. Against FDU Florham, their quarterback, Anthony Caserta, who could be the player of the year offensively threw 44 yards to his own team and 88 yards to Del Val on two pick sixes, or one pick six and one long return. And this is another one of those days where it looks like the defense has a chance to outscore the opposing offense as they now have a 24 to three lead. Line drive taken by Ferran Thomas and oh my, he is hammered, naughty. Actually, it's Darius Nichols who got him this time. Thought it was Naughty Jones. It was Darius Nichols who runs him over. Oh, 
And the Flying Dutch will come back out on offense. They say 43, it was 33. Now the Flying Dutchman missed a chance at a touchdown on blown coverage, and then very next play, the Aggies get the touchdown on defense. Bohannon will go out of the eye. And hand it off to Irvy, and again, nothing. Right into the arms of Kelvin Brown. And falls forward for maybe half a yard. Second and nine coming up. Lycoming has scored again. They lead Wilkes 24 to 7. And a man down here for Lev Val. <laughs> Offensive lineman. Get some help to his feet, number 95. Brian Eshelman, they say. Too many papers here. <laughs> sort through them. Second and 10 coming up. They say Irvy did not get anything on that. Out of the eye again. Bohannon fakes. Throws. He's got a man wide open. Catch is made. And then tackle is made just as quickly. <laughs> no, you're nowhere near the first down. <laughs> Sophomore tight end Maximus Dopwell makes the catch. I think he didn't realize which set of sticks he was past. He got two yards, three yards on the play before he was dropped by Ahmad Jones. Third and seven for the Flying Dutchman. Again, they have not converted a third down yet here today. Last third down was disastrous, and this one will be a timeout. FDU Florham has scored again, 42-35 now in that game. Albright, 2-4, and four, not on Delaware Valley's schedule this year. They now unbalanced schedule with the MAC. Missed two teams per year. The last two years, the Aggies did not play Miss Recordia and FDU Florham. This year, they missed the two Reading schools, Albright and Alvernia. Lebanon Valley would have missed Lycoming, but they ended up playing each other in a non-conference game anyway. And coming up in a season or two, the conference will have to make a decision because there'll be yet another new member, Eastern University, out of St. David's, Pennsylvania, basically one of the mainline suburbs of Philadelphia. They're going to add football, and that will give the conference 12 teams. I don't know what they'll do. Some conferences split to 6-6. Six and six. I'm not sure what they'll do in this case. Third and seven here, Braden Bohannon will run right into the arms of Anthony Tedisco. Ahmad Jones also there. Jones had the legs. And it'll be third and, or fourth and uh, five or six and another punt coming on for the Flying Dutchman. Tamir Barksdale trots onto the field. Samir's had a bunch of punt returns that haven't counted because of penalties. We'll see if this one does. Greg or Jeremy Boers steps out. Aggies lead 24 to 3. No pressure. Much better kick from Boers. Wow, this is a beauty. Barksdale catches at his 25 and runs five yards backwards. And this is going to help Boers' average out a lot. Oh. Barksdale's still on his feet. He's still going backwards. <laughs> well, Barksdale ran 20 yards the wrong direction. 
And Aggies will start at their own 15. So for Boers, it was like a 60-yard punt, basically, on the net after netting one yard on his last kick. By far, Boers is long of the year. Bohannon comes out. Ryan Laughlin checks in. Nasir Morgan to the top of the formation. Trips to the bottom of the formation. Aggies will have to go a long way here to score. Starts with a pass. Bohannon steps out of trouble. Now he'll run. And he can run. Daquan Bohannon still going. All the way down to the Flying Dutchman, 43. That's a 43-yard run for Daquan Bohannon. <laughs> nice block near the end of the play there by Aaron Nelson. You saw Bohannon, he got separation on Dylan Estes, and Estes was pointing at the next guy to see if they could track him down. Bohannon's, he's faster than he looks, and he's very, very large. So, so much for the bad field position. Hit off on the counter, Quaddy Struthers with a big hole. And Quadir Struthers down to the 22-yard line. That is a pickup of 21. So the Aggies get 66 yards on two running plays to start this drive. First and 10 for Delaware Valley from the Lebanon Valley, 22. That game has gone final in Reading. FDU Florin beats Albright 42 to 35. And off, Dante Simmons' turn. He's got a big hole. And the Aggies go three plays, 85 yards, all on the ground. Well, hold on a second. Yeah, holding penalty this time. So that wipes out the touchdown. Second final of the day also in. Alvernia falls to Stevenson 35 to six. First and 10, or first and 20 for Delaware Valley after the holding penalty. And the Aggies will have to call timeout. Aggies with a rare Saturday game at Wilkes. They played mostly a lot of Friday night games up there. Similar to Florham, they will play a Saturday afternoon game for the first time in quite a while. And again, the Aggies, if the scores hold both here and there, the Aggies will be playing for the automatic bid and at least a share of the conference title. If they win next week against Wilkes and then lose the following week to Widener, they would share the title with Lycoming but still have the automatic bid by virtue of the head-to-head -head win. Twenty-four fourteen, Wilkes gets into the end zone. Nine twenty-three to play. Warriors leading in Williamsport right here. Aggies twenty-four to three. Touchdown off of a fumble return for Anthony Nobile. Aggies with a first and 20. Throw across the middle. Oh, <laughs> Calhoun lost it and found the handle. And Isaiah Calhoun with a pickup of eight to match his jersey number, second and 12. Basketball season gets underway this week. These two schools and a lot of others. Friday is the start, the official start of the bet football season, or basketball season. Saturday is the Aggies' first game. They'll play Gwitted Mercy at Newman. And Bohannon is sacked. Back at the 29-yard line. Let's see who got him. It was Brandon Brubaker. 
Third sack of the year for Brandon. And the Aggies with a third and 17 or so. So after going 45 yards on the first play and 21 yards on the next and what looked like it might be a 28-yard touchdown, that was wiped out by a holding penalty. And now the Aggies are kind of stuck in neutral here at the 29. Simmons to the right of Bohannon, third and 17. And the handoff to Simmons on the draw, and he gets not much anything. Fourth and 16, Aggies will go for it. Too close to punt, obviously not a field goal situation, although the Aggies do have a rare field goal today. Have to get to the Lebanon Valley 13 or so for a first down. Aggies are 0 for 2 on fourth down today. And Bohannon gets out of trouble and don't intercept it. <laughs> Just let it hit the ground. And the Aggies 0 for 3 now. So, Delaware Valley offense short circuits itself with penalties and a sack. They do manage to flip the field position, although with the way the defense is playing, that's not too much of a concern anyway. Aggies still have given up one first down here today and one play of really any size. A chuck and duck that ended up for 12 yards, and that's pretty much it. That's the entirety of the Lebanon Valley offense. Hand off. And Malachi is going to get a couple before he's pulled down. And here comes a flag. Malachi got to the twenty uh, thirty-one. Looks like the flag is on Del Val. Our horse collar tackle, okay. So that's 15 yards. And that's been the Flying Dutchman's best play all day, as it has been for a number of teams for the Aggies. The Aggies are giving up on defense. They're giving up 118 yards per game. They have 115 yards of penalties against per game. So now obviously not all of those are offensive penal or defensive penalties, but... There have been games where they've given up more via the yellow flag than from scrimmage. First and 10 for the Flying Dutchman from their own 47. Oh, my. And I think the Aggies took the ball away. I think that's going to be Delaware Valley ball. Sean Balcom forces the fumble, and the Aggies take it away. The tailback, by the time he got the ball, the Aggies defender, Balkum was on top of him and ripped it out of his hands. And the Aggies, <laughs> that is the great equalizer for them. That was, I don't think I've ever seen that. I've seen guys get there simultaneously. Let's take a look. Wow. And again, the scary thing about that, that guy's a freshman. That's Sean Bolcom. He's got two tackles all year now. So they are incredibly deep. And I think the Aggies are going to call timeout. Yeah, they should have left it go. Simmons was going to have a nice game. I don't know. The, the offense just cannot consistently get itself in order here. I'm not really sure what the issue is. Uh, 3.36, no, I guess they just, I'm not sure what happened. No penalty, no anything. We'll just do it again. Or do it for the first time, since we never really snapped the ball there to start with. 
Struthers in motion. Hand off to Simmons. Dante looking for some space. Nice tackle there by Brad Shear after a pickup of three. One thing, one thing that has been a positive, the Aggies have had a bunch of penalties today, but no personal, they've had a personal foul on a horse collar tackle and a personal foul on a roughing the kicker, but they have not had any unsportsmanlike conduct penalties, and those have been a problem for a while now. Second and seven, handoff to Simmons. And Dante backpedaling. Not a big guy, but he's strong. And Simmons gets about five. It'll be third and two. Ryan Laughlin checks in. We're in the box here with the coaches from Lebanon Valley, as is always the case. So when you hear people celebrating, or in that case, calling out that Ryan Laughlin's entering the game, that's what that's picking up. Twins to the top and the bottom of the formation. And Bohannon will keep it himself. He's got the first down. And rolls all the way to the 15. Bohannon's a really good athlete. And the Aggies into the red zone for the one, two, three, fourth time today. Two touchdowns, a field goal, and they were into the end zone on the play that where the ball was fumbled away in the first half. So three for four. Julian White to the left of Bohannon. Bohannon will throw, maybe. He's looking. Nowhere to go. There's going to be an incomplete pass, and there's the flag. Yep. They're going to get Walt Truxel for the block in the back. <laughs> Fischl was having some trouble finding his the flag, but again, this is the offense story all year long. They just cannot seem to string together multiple plays without something going the wrong direction. Now, that's a rough call on Walt Truxel there. He, I don't know that I would call that a blindside block. It was a fullback hitting a lineman as the lineman was engaged on somebody else. First and very, very, very long. <laughs> First and 25. And the pass, oh, ho, 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 ho. Brad Shear nearly had himself one. As Bohannon just threw that one to the wrong team. Second and 25. Second and 25 for the Aggies. They lead 24 to 3. Another promising drive here in danger of being stopped by a penalty. Handoff, Dante Simmons. And Simmons runs for about 8. It'll be third and about 17. I said that Stevenson game was final, but they must have missed. They must have marked it the wrong way. It's in the fourth quarter now, 35 to six. Bohannon looking, still looking, and Bohannon stays on his feet, throws it. Oh, incomplete! At the last second, he found a guy he liked, Aaron Nelson, but was unable to. Nelson was unable to hang on to it. And fourth and very long here for the Aggies. We've come to call that the, Bohannon does that every single week. He does that at least once where he looks like he's sacked and he flings it away. Normally it's to nobody. That time he actually had an intended receiver nearby. 
33 seconds to play in the third quarter where the Aggies have picked up lots of yards, but their only points were on a defensive touchdown. Aggies offense has one touchdown drive of 45 yards, one of 11 yards, and again, they just can't get on the same page. How is it you don't have 11 guys on the field for fourth and 17? O'Hannon under siege, and he is sacked. And the Aggies drive, gets to the red zone, the 16, and they end up going 30 yards backwards. And the offense is not, has not been good today. First and ten for the Flying Dutchman, which is not also had not had much of an offensive day, putting it mildly. Handoff, and well, finally some space there for Tim Irvy. Gets about six and a half, and that, believe it or not, is the second longest play from scrimmage today for the Flying Dutchman. And that is also the last play of the third quarter. Fourth quarter coming up. Delaware Valley in control. Defense taking care of business here on homecoming. It's 24 to 3. That third quarter, Delaware Valley dominates on both sides of the ball. Comes away with just seven points off the Anthony Nobile fumble return for a touchdown. Two for, uh, turnovers in that fourth quarter, third quarter. Aggies with a couple of drives in the Lebanon Valley territory, short circuited by sacks and penalties. And the Flying Dutchmen are. Still looking for just their second first down of the day without it being coming on a penalty. And they're going to have to wait at least one more play. It's third and two. Shamir Vessels makes the tackle there after a gain of one. Ian Merhon, senior running back from New Philadelphia with a rare touch. Cameron Niemeyer to the top of the formation. Andrew Olson to the bottom of the formation. I formation, they need to get two yards. And that's not going to happen. That is Trent Freeze and a flag on the play. And that's going to wipe out the sack by Freeze because that's going to be a personal foul. So the Aggies' defense, sometimes their worst enemy is themselves. That was a loss of 10, and they're going to call a penalty on DelVal. Oh, all right. Well, it was not Trent Freeze's fault. He did. <laughs> Freeze will get the sack. It was a the second sideline infraction, so it's a five-yard penalty. So it'll be third and uh, really long. Well, third and well, let's see. Hold on a second. If the play stands, 
it would be fourth and eight. I don't know if the play stands or not. Yeah. Now they're going to bring the punting unit on. So the sack by Freeze counts. And it's Trent's second of the year. And then you mark five yards off for the sideline infraction, and that makes it fourth and eight. 14-10 to play. Barksdale stands at his 28. Kick is away. Trent Freeze nearly got a piece of that one, and the ball bounces out of bounds at the 34. Trent Freeze has got a bunch of punt blocks in his career here and nearly had another one there. And the Aggies offense takes over. Delaware Valley leading 24-3. to And I think we'll see the first team offense. It's not like they've... They've got a lot of yards. They only have, I mean, on their, they have only really have the first drive. They scored on the second one, but they were set up on the defense at the left valve 11. Everything else is pure special teams. A field goal at the end of the half after a left valve turnover. Here's Dante Simmons, and Simmons turns the corner. And Dante Simmons with a big game. They mark Dante out at the 44. Thirteen thirty-three to play, Delaware Valley in front. Well, they're going to go direct snap to Ralph Highland here. This is a senior tailback. And Highland runs for about six. We'll give Ralph five. Dante checks back in. Nope, I'm going to go with a two-back set. Don't go with this too often. Highland and Simmons on the field at the same time. They will split Simmons way out wide, like a wide receiver, like out on his own island. Direct snap to Highland. Highland pitches to Nelson. Nelson. And Nelson... Down the 20 to the 19-yard line. Big block by Nasir Morgan there. And the Aggies run a little razzle-dazzle and pick up about 25 yards. Sixth trip to the red zone today. The Aggies, two touchdowns, a field goal, a fumble, and whatever you want to call the last drive where they went 25 yards backwards after they got into the red zone. And here they're just going to hand it off to Dante Simmons, and Simmons is going to surge forward close to 10 yards, give him eight. Well, the Aggies, we saw a rare two tailback formation. Now we're going to see a rare, nope, I was going to say two fullback formation, but C.J. Tomlinson is listed as a tight end. Number 40 who checks in. I formation, ball is fumbled, laying on the ground. The Aggies got there, and Walt Truxel covers it up. 47. And it ended up being a gain of one. <laughs> and that's Truxel's first touch of the year right there. <laughs> Truxel, a one-yard carry. Third and two. Aggies bring... Tavian Dorsey out. Dorsey has not seen a lot of snaps from scrimmage. Dorsey to the bottom of the formation. Nope. Dorsey to the other side of the formation. Coaches think they know what's coming. They do, and Struthers runs for the first down anyway. Struthers on the jet sweep. Picks up four and a half. Of course, another penalty. 
And we'll see what happens here. Well, the Aggies are the most penalized team in the country, and this is pretty much why. There's just no call for that. And Struthers has got the first down on third down and picks up a personal foul and makes it, well, yeah. I think it's first and ten from just outside of the red zone. Now, it's not too often you have to get to the red zone twice on the same drive. <laughs> First and 10 for Delaware Valley from outside the 20. Hand off. This is Julian White, and this is another penalty on Delaware Valley. So that'll mark them back. Well, spot of the foul was five yards down the field. We'll see where they mark it. Yep, loss of seven. First and 17. Now Aggies lead, but this has been on the offensive side very ugly. Ten fourteen to play. Aggies in front. And Bohannon will throw this time. Looking down the field for Nasir Morgan, and no, knocked away. Good coverage down the field by Dre Birch. He's second and 17. Second and 17 here for Delaware Valley. Have to get to the Flying Dutchman 12 for a first down. Coaches think it's a quarterback run. They're wrong. Barksdale. Yeah, wide receiver screen. Out of bounds inside the 20 to the 18. That's a pickup of about 10 yards. That'll break it third and, third and six or so for Delaware Valley. Nine forty-four and counting here in the fourth quarter. Don't have any statistics, so I couldn't tell you how much how many yards the Aggies have. It's a bunch, but again, in terms of pure offensive points, they have really seven. Defensive touchdown, a field goal when the offense didn't move the ball a yard, and an offensive touchdown when they took over at the eleven. Bohannon underneath, catch made, John Davis. Davis first down, and he is sandwiched at the five, down at the three. Good catch by John Davis, first and goal, Delaware Valley. So the Aggies will try and finish off the drive here. Walt Truxel checks into the game as does Tamir Barksdale. Aaron Nelson to the top of the formation. Dante Simmons to the left of Daquan Bohannon. Bohannon has one rushing touchdown already. He hands it off to Simmons here. He did not get in. He got about a yard. Second and goal from the two. Zach Harding checks in, as does Bryce Dorsey, a two tight end set. Clock inside, eight and a half minutes to play. Aggies have controlled this game pretty much throughout. 24 to three. 
Truxel and Simmons in the backfield. Bohannon hands it off and lunging in but not in is Bryce Dorsey. Tight end gets a yard. It'll be third and goal from the one. So the Aggies doing it one yard at a time here. <laughs> third and goal. First and goal from the three, second and goal from the two, third and goal from the one. Truxel in front of Simmons. Bohannon out of the eye. Handoff, Dante. And he's in. No signal. There it is. Touchdown. Dante Simmons, eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Keeps him one behind the conference leader, his quarterback, Daquan Bohannon. The Aggies do manage to finish off a drive and increase the lead to 30-3. to three. Score update out of the New England Middle, uh, the New England Women's and Men's Athletic Conference. We'll tell you why that matters in a minute. Springfield is going to defeat Kings Point. Right here, the extra point is good. Kings Point would have been the number two team and still may be the number two team behind Delaware Valley in the region. Now, the question is whether the Aggies will get a chance to host. They win out, they're 10 0, they absolutely should, but. We have said that before. Thirty-one to three, Delaware Valley in control. In Williamsport, fourth quarter just underway. Lycoming continues to lead Wilkes twenty-seven to fourteen. FDU Florham and Stevenson already win, won their earlier starts. In addition to the uh, conference title, the top three teams from the MAC will play the top three teams from the Centennial, and that will be a tall order because the Centennial basically got three teams in the top 15. They're going to have a really weird tiebreaker that's going to have to decide who gets the automatic bid, but one or two of those teams is going to be playing <laughs> the second and third team in the in the MAC. Kick is away, taken by Haran Thomas. Look like they're going to fake the reverse, and Thomas is forced to the inside, and pretty good return, still on his feet, and tackle. Good second effort there from Thomas. Finally tackled by Jameer Gilliam, a freshman defensive back from Pensgrove. Seven eleven to play. Aggies still have their first team defense out there. Jameer Pavard, I don't think he realized where the ball. <laughs> Jameer trots off to the other side of the ball. Flying Dutchman have had one first down all day if you take away the ones on penalties. Malachi Williams, the deep back. Williams bounces to the outside, and that's a mistake because that's a loss of two. Freeze, Tedesco, Blaine Netterman, and Benjamin Camerano all there for the tackle. When the Aggies lost their All-American, Michael Nobile, who was on course to be probably the defensive player of the year in the conference, maybe the region, and maybe even the country. But this defense is so good and so deep. They will have, I would think, multiple All-Americans on defense, and the conference, all, uh, the all-conference team is going to basically be their starting lineup as, as Malachi Williams again, a loss of one, and that time the quarterback who's Scott Schwalm, who's checked in, almost handed the ball off to Anthony Nobile by accident. Scott Schwalm, a sophomore from Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Third and 10. Camerano and Kelvin Brown check out. Netterman got a playoff. He comes back as Aaron Myers checks out. Twins to the bottom of the formation. Out of the eye, Scott Schwalm. 
And he lost the ball. And ouch. He ends up getting slammed face first into the turf by Ahmad Moore. And that is the way that drive comes to an end. Three plays, no yards. Again. Lebanon Valley with one first down on offense today. And again, the scary thing is they will graduate a bunch of guys off of offense, not really so much off of defense. Tedesco will be gone, but a lot of the guys will be back. And that takes a big bounce. And then for whatever reason, Marksdale tries to return it at from his own six. Good kick. Well, Jeremy Boers, I know he had a one-yard punt in the first half, but he is racking up the yards now. That was another big punt. <laughs> And the Aggies will bring their second team offense out. You'll get Casey Decker at quarterback. 5.02 to play. Delaware Valley in front, 31 to 3. Second team offensive line Justin Roman, Dan Crow, Kieran Saunders, Matt Kristoff, and Shane Newell. Devon Speed in at fullback. Decker will have Ralph Hyland to his left. And he'll hand it off to Ralph, and Ralph goes nowhere. Tackled immediately by Sean Fester. Ralph loses four yards. Aggies, even in this uh, package, will have most of their first team receivers out there because there really is almost no differential between first and second team receivers. So Isaiah Calhoun and Des Austin, who both saw run with the first team offense, are out there at wide receiver. Second and 13. Decker will get a rare chance to throw the ball. Incomplete. Not sure how much it matters, because Decker only comes in when the game is in a situation like it is now. But his numbers on the year, 10 for 14, 132 yards, three touchdowns. And... Four rushes for 13 yards. Davian Dorsey, or excuse me, Bryce Dorsey checks back in. Final five minutes here. Aggies just trying to pretty much run out the clock. They're up 31 to 3. Decker. Catch is made. And first down. Nicely done there by Bryce Dorsey. Dorsey's third touch of the day. And that will give the Aggies a chance to probably hand the ball off a few more times to Ralph Hyland or a, any other running back of choice. And they've, once you get to this point in the game, they use a whole bunch of them. They're going to keep Ralph Hyland out there. First and ten. Hand off to Hyland. Senior tailback gets about five. Well, not the pristine offensive performance that Duke Greco would have wanted, but Duke Greco is going to be the Aggies' all-time winning coach here in football in a very short period of time. This will be his 67th victory. He will break the tie with his friend Jim uh, Clements. Handoff here as Jonathan St. Hilaire goes forward for a couple. Or is that Tim Weldon? That might be Weldon. Yeah, it's Timothy Weldon for a couple. So Duke's record is going to be 67 and 11. 15th year as the offensive coordinator, but just his seventh year as the head coach. And Duke is. An understated gentleman in every sense of the word as Weldon runs off a first down. He's very soft-spoken. But he has maintained and built on the success that started, we mentioned him earlier, under G.A. Mangus as head coach. And then Jim Clements. And now Duke Greco. And he... 
does not like doing media stuff at all. <laughs> he's not an interview guy. He's not a press conference guy. But he can enjoy this one. Island for a couple. Tackle made by Cody Shea, the sophomore from Denver, Pennsylvania. Second and seven coming up for Del Val. Got a bunch of those guys today. Got another another B. Second and seven. Decker just tying it up to Highland here. Another one. And Ralph Highland for about five or six. Aggies will head up the Northeast Extension to Wilkes. Next week, can eliminate any final week drama with a win. Of course, they will want the 10-0 record to have the conference title to themselves and to fortify their playoff positioning. Third and two. Decker just watching the seconds tick off here is he's in no hurry. Handoff. First down, midfield. Timothy Weldon, the sophomore tailback, for a couple more. Aggies will win their 34th conference game in a row, building on their own record. And Duke Greco gets the Gatorade bath. <laughs> Celebration of the record. Final 10 seconds run off the clock. Delaware Valley's defense gives up one first down. They outscore the Flying Dutchman themselves 7-3. But the offense and the special teams points obviously count as well. And so your final score is Delaware Valley 31, Lebanon Valley 3. The Aggies improve to 8-0, and 6-0 in the conference. And we'll have a chance to wrap up the automatic bid to the conference with a win next week on the road at Wilkes. That will do it for us this afternoon. No stats, so we're going to wrap this up quickly. Thanks to producer Tony and our cameraman, Shad. Thanks to Brad and Chris here, the team, uh, the folks at Delaware Valley. Thanks to the folks from Lebanon Valley for tuning in. And it'll be a couple weeks before we're back with pictures, but next week, 1 o'clock kickoff, 12.50 pregame, Aggies and Colonels from Edwardsville. Hope you enjoyed your homecoming afternoon festivities. If you couldn't make it back, hopefully we brought a little of the campus here to you today. And if you're an Aggies fan, a victory. Your final score, Delaware Valley 31, Lebanon Valley College 3. Have a good afternoon, everyone.